Welcome back to day three of the LCS Challengers League, as we affectionately call it Knackle, and I am joined here by two of my favorite people coming up from the open qualifiers. You might have seen them before. We have Andrew Grapes, Howe, and Summer Smacks. Hi, joining us today on the broadcast. We're going to start with you, Summer, because this is not your first rodeo coming into the now Challenger scene. How's it feel to be back? Feels really good. Uh, week one, no less. I mean, we're getting things started off with a bang. We've got some teams that, uh, you know, me and Grapes are pretty familiar with coming straight off of the promotion tournament today, too. So it's going to be a great show. Nice. And Grapes, you were recently on the Sea Lol Championships, having your opportunity to cast from the Rice Studio. Congratulations, Thank first you. off. But now you're moving on to the big leagues, right? You, you know, is this another level for you? Yeah, we went straight from <laughs> LA, the big studio where all the LCS is played, to, to my house, to my to my basement. So that's uh, the <laughs> trajectory that we're going for here. So we always love to see the remote broadcasts are always some of the best things to go through, but it's not all about us. It is still here about all the different teams that we have going on. And we've already had two days of competition. Now, I know you guys have been watching a lot of League of Legends with the OQs, but we have a lot more going on right now, Graves, here in the Challengers League. And how's it been jumping back between all the different tournaments? Uh, there's a lot of League of Legends on my screen all the time. Yesterday and Saturday for the qualifiers, we had the OQ Swiss format happen. And there's 16 games going on at the same time across a <laughs> bunch of different games. You have 16 games. monitors for that? It's it's literally impossible to, to cover it all, but I, I did my best. We we're going to talk about the qualifiers a little bit later on, but I've been watching some NACL as well, so we're all set for the day. Yeah, and Summer, same thing. You've had a lot of OQs to watch. I mean, these are the future of the future of the LCS. What's exciting down there? Ooh, well, we've got some big veteran names down there this time around. It always happens like a little bit, but no team quite as stacked as our uh, 5 team. But uh, yeah, like, like Andrew said, we can talk a little bit about we'll talk about later. that. We'll get to that very soon. For, NACL. for now, we need to be focusing <laughs> on the Challengers League teams because if you are coming back and for some reason you're watching this stream on the third day, first off, make sure you check out the LCS underscore Challengers as well. But we got 10 teams coming through, only three teams that are still LCS affiliated. And and Summer, we got some new teams that I'm sure you've got long histories to take a look at with these ones. Ooh, yes, absolutely. We got Maryville and Supernova straight from the promotion relegation tournament uh, just about a month ago, I believe. Oh, the time flies there, but very, very excited to be seeing a couple of these teams. And uh, we got Maryville on the stream today, so going to be looking forward to that one for sure. But yeah, lots of provisional rosters. Team Fish Taco, another new name that a lot of the amateur fans will be big fans of already. I mean, yeah. even go back to a year ago, and these are a lot of teams that Summer and I were, were casting down in the, in the PGCQ last year when it was called Ooh. that. Teams like Wildcard, Beer, AoE, uh, making their way up. Another team that we haven't talked about too much is Disguise, and can I just say, brutal way to introduce them to the league, having to play against TL and FlyQuest their first few games. Yeah. I mean, they're still looking pretty good, though. Everybody had a lot of these guys as some of the top contenders going into the Challengers League. But they're not the only teams that we need to be paying attention to a little bit, especially with our two guests coming on today. It is time to start taking a look at some of the things that are happening down in the uh, Challengers League Open Qualifiers, where 32 teams had an opportunity to play. And grapes as we start taking a look at this what are the teams that we have on our screen that we're going to need to pay attention to oh man there's actually a lot of really interesting ones because obviously with the league uh above them the nacl shrinking from 16 to 10 a lot of new open talent ready to get back up into this into the league through the oq specifically that number one seed mirage alliance they have neo they have chad jungle they also have dardock playing support for some for whatever reason just, <laughs> you know, just because so a, a lot of really stacked talent on that one seed uh and you know all the way throughout as well there, there's a lot of really fun players that i'm excited to watch over the next couple of weeks four x lcs players on a qualifier team uh and yes i did say four because chad did play that one lcs game so i'm counting him alongside winthrop university up in the, t the second seed to uh perhaps the new collegiate titans of the qualifiers i no, love I how we have right next to each other 10 on 11 we have aporia who is like a you know a new esports organization they have about 10k followers on twitter and right above them in seating is uh, Keelix's Grandpa Gamers. That's, that's, yeah. the, that's yeah. what we're seeing in the qualifier. Now, now, which of these is the best logo, actually? Mm, I, I like the Kelly X's, uh, yeah. the sign there. I think I think that's my favorite for sure. Uh, shout out to Mina one. or Thai for the Froggy 5 logo. Always a beautiful uh, artist. Created the DK crew logo back in, in the day. So uh, some history there with some animal affiliated organizations. 
We always <laughs> love all the community things that people have been putting out recently, but we also got to take a look at what the community has been saying about the Challengers League yesterday. And if you want to be part of the conversation as well, make sure you use the hashtag NACL and tweet at path to LCS. But jumping into our first one, we have some reactions from one of our players from yesterday, Minui. Going 1-1 today in Team Fish Taco, losing games because of bad decisions sucks. Definitely need to step it up and start thinking during the game. Sorry for the bad gameplay to everyone and myself. I will improve. Summer, I feel like that's kind of the way that you got to look at a lot of these games. Mm -hmm. Fear was a team that was very hyped up going into spring. Yeah, and 1-1 one, one against Team Fish Taco, 0-2 against FlyQuest. I think for Cincinnati Fear and a lot of their fans, this is not the start that they were really expecting, going 1-3, a 25% win rate. That's pretty low, considering this team was in top four of the regular season in the spring. But I believe in Manui. I believe in the Fear boys. I think they can bring it back from this. Go over to the next one. We have Emmer. First 2-0 of the split. Happy got to play. Aphelios, both games, five-man, both of them. First game GG's to evil geniuses here at Grapes. And honestly, like that's the kind of thing you can you can just kind of see the hint of the Moonlight Vigil coming out. Yeah, it's about <laughs> to like maybe top 10 moments before disaster right here for evil geniuses. <laughs> they had a, a bit of an, a, an unfortunate series against Wildcard. I think Lens has been an incredible player all season long and, and continuing here in summer. They also 2 0'd Zeri Yumi, I want to point out. Yeah, uh, EG played Zeri Yumi. So just, yep. congratulations yeah. to Wildcard for defeating the evil. Yeah, thank God for that as well. Hopefully we'll get a little bit less of that. But <laughs> young mid, young Choi playing for Disguised. Host drew me as this champ for a reason. GG FlyQuest 1-1 DSG is scaling. Now, Grapes again, I took a look at this and I called out, he's got two letter R's. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, that's a Kali, right? That's Is that what it's, that what it's <laughs> going for? I'm pretty, he had a good Akali game yesterday. Could I just, be, I'm pretty sure it's that. It could be a Limp Lucian. Uh, well, there is the also <laughs> there's also another player who has two more letter R's, but congratulations to this guys, and we have another player from the same team, Tomio. Yo, I promise I'm not such one one trick summer. Two two, hopefully we get the two zero tomorrow. I believe him, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping that Disguise Toast Gaming can uh, avoid the 1-1 the one, one cycle. But yeah. I do just want to point out, this uh, this profile picture just really embodies everything about Tomio. I've yeah. loved it ever since he changed to this. This is per perfect stuff from him. <laughs> Big cheesy grin and everything. <laughs> and then our last one we have, we have Breezy coming in formally of CLG. 2-0 today and 3-1 to start the season. Ready to carry over the momentum for tomorrow. I'm really liking our team and staff and excited for the rest of the season. And that Grapes, I gotta ask, he's got the uh, disguised face on. Do you believe him? Uh, yeah, I think Breezy's really good, actually. He played two very different champions yesterday. One game of Alistar, one game of Jenna. Looked pretty solid in both of them. So I'm just excited to see more. We're going to ha have that as our first series today. And speaking of, we get to take a look at exactly how everything has been shaking out so far in the first week. Every team is playing every day. Every team will play two games every day. We have a four stack coming out on the top half with AoE, FlyQuest, TLC, and Wildcard. Fortunately here summer, we have Maryville, the stars that you were looking for, Aww. currently sitting at the bottom. Yeah, they've got some cope, though. They they haven't scrimmed too much. They were running C-Law games and C-Law scrims on the previous patch before this. So I think they can bounce back from this. But yeah, definitely not where you want to be. The only winless team, I'm sure, doesn't feel good. Meanwhile, on the other side, AoE right at the top. Whether that's because of their results or because of alphabetical order. Um, very proud of those guys, for sure. A little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. But as we... Take a look at this. We will have more games on today's screen, of course. To start it off, we will be watching AoE currently in first, taking on Evil Geniuses who have fallen down to two and two. And after that, we have Maryville versus Cincinnati Fear. And I feel like these are going to tell us a whole lot about both these mm. uh, sets of teams here, Grapes. There's a lot on the line, especially for Evil Geniuses, who now have their full roster together. Yeah, this is... I'm very excited for this series specifically, the one that we're starting off with, because I think both of these teams have a lot to prove going into this matchup. AoE sitting at the top of the standings, but haven't had the strongest strength of schedule. Meanwhile, Evil Geniuses, you know, they 2-0'd Maryville, and then they got 0-2'd by Wildcard, which is you know, a little unfortunate for them. So we, we were hearing that with this new lineup and just finally being together as one in the summer split, we're going to see good things. 2-0 against AoE would mean a lot for them right now. 
And as we start looking at it and speaking of who they need to be going 2-0 against, let's start taking a look at the rosters for our first match of the day. It is going to be AoE Gold versus Evil Genius Challengers. And AoE, they got a bunch of players coming right on back. And Summer, there's a lot of strong players here, and I feel like Breezy in particular has kind of stood out. Yeah, Breezy has been really stellar. I mean, like Andrew said before, playing multiple different styles of champions and being this new voice for AoE Gold, already a winning record for this team. That spells good things as they have completely shifted their entire communication structure. You know, uh, Winnie, previously the jungler on this team, a very loud, very commanding force on this team. And he, alongside Skytech, had a lot of team experience together. So the fact that they are winning these games with an entirely new jungle, entirely new support to this team, I think it says a lot. Alongside Concept as well, you can. You know, it's nice that you can see the uh, the silhouettes there are yeah. the new players, since <laughs> they don't have the jersey pictures yet. <laughs> yeah, but their opponents today, Evil Geniuses, as we said, a lot to prove. Their, their lineup has stayed the same, or at least their intended lineup has stayed the same. It is cool to see Ryoma and King able to step in from day one. They've had moments of looking good, have some moments of not looking good. And remember, this was the only Challengers League team uh, that was a Challengers team that did not win a single playoff series. And their loss, actually, did come against AoE in the lower bracket. Ooh. Yeah, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that right now. Two returning players coming in from AoE, right? Darkwings and Lynx, pivotal players in that rematch. Yes, watch the shockwave here from Darkwings. He had a couple of really nasty ones in this series, and some of it also Ooh. came Ooh. down to, you know, Ryoma running it down a little bit there in game number one. Shh. This series was very close. I think a lot of people had high expectations for both AoE and EG. Um, uh, neither of them really got matched, but specifically for EG here, you know, going down in the lower bracket without taking a single series. And continuing to see how well that these teams will be performing, I know they have been fairly divisive amongst the community as to how strong people are expecting these two teams to be. Summer, where do you think they'll end up? Ooh, yeah. I mean, I, I do want to touch on the divisiveness before giving my opinion because okay. I was listening to a bit of like a like a podcast power ranking thing that a couple of the community Call casters who was it? Who was it? Did. Salt mine? It was um, the Salt Mine Pod, I believe. Let's go. Let's um, go salt mine. They had one of them had EG at fourth. One of them had them at ninth. So yeah. to say that it's divisive, I think, is a bit of an understatement. That's half the league of a difference. I'm more aligned with the fourth, the up in the top half. I think EG, with this uh, new addition to the lineup, I think is going to be really promising. And I think um, it's really going to show the skills that a player like Shaden, who we expect a lot out of, to uh, really blossom this team. Um, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited for EG. I think they're going to be really good. And I've got word as well recently from some of their management that they are expecting Shaden in particular, like you just said, to be a front runner for the most valuable prospect here in summer 2023. And I can't think of a better expert on what's going to happen in the summer split than you, Summer. Is Shaden really all that? I think so. And we saw that firsthand just a couple of days ago against Maryville. This Vi game was the stuff of legend. Completely took over the game from the first gank, and it did not stop there. Just so many plays started off by him. I love this Herald steal as well. Just for good measure, taking away the objective before starting off the fights. And this is the biggest example to me that Shaden is that guy on this roster. The other games that we saw of him uh, didn't quite show that to us. Like I said before, they did actually lose two games with Zeri Yumi just yesterday. So you don't need to figure that stuff out. But as far as Shaden's Vi, I have full confidence that he will be able to bring this team to some more victories. Yeah. But it's not as though he can just run over the game all by himself. We did see last he time he had a bunch of he had a bunch of opportunities <laughs> to just kind of rock it into the game. But this time he's going up against our sweet summer child in Will, returning <laughs> after missing in spring split here, Grapes. And the way that Will has been able to fire back in this split so far is already giving us a lot of hope for this roster. I feel like every time we've seen Will in the summer split, it's always looked like this guy is a really talented player and I'm excited to see what he does next split. And then you know, he's taken the spring split off in both 2022 and 2023. <laughs> he is back here in summer and so far this, I feel like he's looked pretty good and playing a multitude of different play styles. Had the Vi just like Shaden did uh, on Saturday and here this Viego game against Supernova I thought was really, really impressive. Yeah, we were definitely asking originally who on AoE is going to like step up as going to 
somebody who's going to be the big shot caller, somebody who's going to be the big playmaker. And it seems like Will has absolutely stepped into those shoes. But as we take a look at it with both of these players having played last summer, they both had some pretty darn good stats here, Summer. And why don't you go ahead and take us through it? Yeah, looking at this one, uh, I think the biggest thing that jumps out is how close they were to finishing uh, the entire split long. Shaden ended up in third, Will in fourth. These guys were super, super competitive the entire split long. Of course, Shaden back then on Cloud9, Will on Dignitas. And if you reminisce back to those times, I mean, the jungle pool was pretty stacked all across the board, and these two coming into a more rookie position, uh, Shaden especially, that was literally his rookie split. Um, I, it was really, really impressive right off the bat, so uh, the fact that they're competing against each other again, I think, is is just really nice, again, in that summer split. Yeah, and, and not only uh, are, were they really competitive with each other, like, they were very competitive as a whole on teams that were full of players with a ton of experience, right? Yeah, it was actually true. Will's uh, time with 100 Thieves this split was, and that's when Tenacity was still there, uh, and with Shaden on Cloud9 had players like Darshan and the like, so both having really impressive summer splits as like the new young kid, and you know, now we finally get to see them match up again. Yeah, we both know these players have been very strong individually. The question will be, can they continue to step up and elevate their teams now as they go into summer? It definitely feels like with how divisive Evil Geniuses has been, AoE fans are already out in force here on the path of the LCS channel. Before we throw over the draft, I do want to remind everybody, make sure you get those subs in. You get different emotes if you are here on the path of the LCS and versus LCS challengers. If you want to start throwing out Steve and Eric flexing off at each other, make sure you give a sub. You got, to you got like the glasses players. one, right? I got the glasses one. The glasses are coming in later today. I don't have them yet, but for now, let's go ahead and get into game one. Grapes, take it away. Thank you very much, Josh. It is time to start off our last day of week one of the NACL Summer Split. Summer, pleasure to be with you here as we get into the draft for AoE versus Evil Genius's challengers. AoE going to be starting off on blue side. On this patch, it's been very, very strong. Yes, Yumi is banned. Good. I hope that we get that all four games today, please. I don't want to see that anymore. And yeah, I mean, EG, they, they've they wanted to play this Yumi and the Zeri just yesterday to pretty poor effect, I will say. I'm really glad to see that taken off the board. I want to see Shaden and the rest of this roster really get involved in these team fights. It really felt like they drafted specifically for King, who did play pretty well, but couldn't really carry the entirety of the roster. Now, Nico banned also. Could still see the Zeri. It's off unbanned right now. We've seen pairings with it, like the Lulu, in, in addition to just the Yumi being uh, a potential you know, pairing alongside that champion. It has been super strong. So just keeping that in mind, especially considering it's been a large part of King's champion pool throughout the start of this season. We're seeing targets towards the mid lane right now as that Syndra is taken away from Ryoma with the Nico already off the board. Yeah, Syndra and Nico. Um, the Nico, of course, can be that flex pick, but not in this game. She's gone. A uh, couple other really powerful champions that can be taken off the board, but the respect ban of the Garen is one that I wasn't really expecting. Of course, Concept pulling that one out to pretty great effect against Supernova most recently. Uh, you know NACL. It's not NACL without Garen. Yeah, there, there's there has, with Moose Hater gone, there has to be like a new Garen player in the league. I guess that's just what we're <laughs> going with each split. And so Concept has taken the mantle uh, and we'll have that man against him. Will looked really good on this Vi throughout the weekend so far, so not surprised to see AoE lock that one up. The Milio in response has been another pick that has been at the top of many teams' priority list throughout the summer split. And Milio is so powerful. It opens up so many different champions that just become insane once you pair alongside it with the extra range, with the interaction that it has with the Ardent Sensor, which is super, super strong. Again, this is on 13.11, so not quite live. Um, so things like the Kog'Maw can start to happen. Jinx as well has been one I really appreciate with the extra range. And uh, of course, Lucian, but that one's already taken away. Will be an Aphelios lock-in for Link, so that, you know, already showing a little bit of response here to the Milio has a little bit of extra range. That has been the kind of difference maker in trying to play against this champion. It's having things that can poke it out, Ooh. make sure that healing is not super useful. But King going to continue his record of playing super hard carry champions, the Jinx rounding out the first phase. Yeah, really, really fun stuff. Like I said, this this champion really appreciates the extra range in the Ardent Sensor from Milio, and getting all of those resets off is going to hopefully be easier for Evil Geniuses now that they have the Jinx and the Ari, both of which really need to get that first kill started for them. 
They're against some pretty strong burst champions, though. There is that Vi, the Annie as well. They need to make sure that the Jinx is outside of the range of those two big ultimates. So King, he's got to be careful. Interesting to see what the support matchup is for Breezy, who has been a really, really big part of AoE's success throughout the season. We already see the Blitzcrank taken away. We've seen that into the milieu as well. You try to, you know, pick off one of the main carries to make sure that they don't heal or cleanse enough uh, to end up surviving through it. Uh, Concept going to have the Scion band against him, and Shaden getting a little bit of target here in the second phase by AoE with the Wukong and Kindred taken off the board. I like the Kindred ban. Kindred's super, super strong with the Trinity Force. New build that we've been seeing bump around. Speaking of getting bumped around, Gragas could potentially be the lock-in. Maybe going jungle, probably going top though for soul. That stability is really nice. Most appreciated up there against whatever pick the AoE is going to lock in here for concept. <laughs> of course, it's not going to be the Garen. As you were mention mentioning the support role and what that could possibly be, I actually really like the Soraka pick into Milio. I think the sustain is really easy to come by against the extra trades that you can get from the Milio passive and. Uh, Healers versus shielders, usually the healers really like that matchup as well, just because you have more effective HP. Um, but it's up to Breezy on if he can actually play that champion. If they actually appreciate having a strong, dedicated healer on a comp like this that seems to be very much about those team fights, I like Rakan a lot too, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the whole composition kind of wants to go in, wants to burst somebody down. Kasante and the Rakan gonna help with that engage. Breezy, a very solid engager with his time on CLG. I actually am very interested to see how Lynx and Breezy interact throughout the entire season because both of them have kind of been with a, a lane buddy for quite a while now. It was Meech with Breezy, it was Skytech with Lynx. Now they're paired together and they both have looked promising uh, throughout the start of the season. And now with the Aphelios Rakan, it's a tough task against Emilio who is a very overtuned champion at the moment, but I'm excited to see that and wow, a Nocturne coming in for Shaden. He wants to start Holy. this game off really hot. Yeah, first Nocturne pick of the split here. All across the board, all of NACL, this is the first one. So very, very exciting stuff. Um, wow, okay. Have you seen much Nocturne ap ap apart from this? I definitely not have not. Patch, no. Okay, the, I mean, the full clear, the full clear to six, that's definitely something you can do in a game like this. I imagine that most everybody in this game is gonna want to hit that level six as soon as possible. And Nocturne Ultimate, pretty strong anti-engage also. If you turn off the lights, Vi has a really hard time actually finding the Jinx and landing that ultimate. So I do like it in that regard. It's just gonna be up to Shaden to see if that ultimate can get off in an early section of the game or if it's gonna be delayed a lot by a potential invade by Will. You can see Evil Genius' comp scaling really well and also functioning all around King's Jinx. A lot of single target burst at the ready Ooh. for them. You can throw a Gragas Barrel, you can press the Nocturne ult onto a crucial target. Even Ryoma can dash forward and land a charm, all to get these resets for King, who is kind of a new addition to the roster because he was added <laughs> such, such, at such a late period into the spring season. But we'll see if that composition will work or it will be AoE going to 4-1 and one and maintaining their spot on the top of the NACL Summer Split. Yeah, I want to talk about King just a little bit here because for Evil Geniuses, they did have a pretty unceremonious uh, exit to the playoffs just last split. I think a lot of people were watching this team really heavily expecting Evil Geniuses challengers to be at the top of the table. And when King did not play a single game and mobility was there for a lot of it, it was pretty easy for a lot of people to be like, well, we expected EG to be at the top, but mobility wasn't the starting player we expected to see, which means that King has a lot of that pressure on yeah. him moving forward. Like, are people correct in their analysis at the start of this year where Evil Geniuses could have been the top of the table if King was there? Two and two, not the greatest start, but it's only week one. If you think King and the rest of EG can flex on AoE today, make sure to drop a subscribe on the Path to LCS channel, you can get those caster-specific emotes that are really fun to spam during some of those hype moments. Maybe we'll get one of those one day, Summer. <laughs> I'm particularly partial to the Sierra one, where she is oh, hugging the cats. Her cats. Yes. yes, that is adorable. Um, yeah, drop that sub. It supports the players as well. You get the emotes, you get to support the players. What's not to love? Yeah, we, we're starting off rather quietly to open up this series. It's been an interesting thing to track 
the differences between the preseason, the midseason patch, and what we were just seeing both in Seelul and in the spring split. Shaden doing something that I've seen a lot of junglers do just in the open qualifiers, clearing the entire red side from Raptors down to Krugs and trying to either go for a reset or make a play up towards the top side because Soul might need it a little bit in a whole Ooh. lot of trouble as Concept wins out heavily on that trade. Concept did cancel that last auto attack. I think that maybe could have prompted some sort of summoner spell, but now here's the play you mentioned. Dang it towards just a grass proc here. Shaden not wanting to expend that flash to try to lock down Concept with a fear. So now a lot of domination across the top side and it allows for Will to maybe get into this bot lane at a quicker timer. So Shaden gonna have to make some adjustments now on this first play. Yeah, Will actually taking a pretty creative path here, skipping the Raptors, skipping the Gromp, trying to stay on the bottom side of the map just for a potential play here. Um, it's definitely clear to me that Will does want to get something started before Shaden does hit level six, and Will not too not too invested in getting that one for himself and just trying to be trying to be there for that bottom lane if anything does happen. But I do want to bring our attention a little bit more to that top side because Concept is still winning those trades really heavily. So playing the Gragas does have a ton of sustain, but still can't match the trades. Concept does get that crash off and does get the recall off just a little bit before. So Concept winning out on that 1v1 so far. Had the option to just walk back to base off of Kirchi seeing that Ruby Crystal, but wants to maintain that extra priority. So going with the teleport here, a little bit of an extra advantage here for Concept. Has the counter matchup, so makes sense that he's doing well in this trade. I want to see a, a good game out of Soul early on. You know, he's somebody who was super highly touted going into the end of last season. We saw, we've seen some glimpses of that again now with on Evil Geniuses, but I think a good summer split and starting off with a good game here against Concept and. A uh, tank matchup would, would definitely mean a lot for this player. He's teleported back up here. Just trying to play the stable game. There are a lot of things you can build on Gragas with a Ruby Crystal. Maybe the Rod of Ages, maybe Everfrost, some sort of tank itemization. It's uh, it's really a jack of all trades, the Gragas. So um, we'll see what the team actually needs from him. Another jungle standoff in yep. the river. We've seen like three of these so far. <laughs> <laughs> Shaden and Will are just, they both want to go in so badly, but... Nice of them to hesitate a little bit. Nice cancel. Milio interaction right there as Lynx will use that Gravitum to ward off King and Smoothie for now. Bot lane remaining pretty even at the moment, and that's kind of the state of the game all across the map. We're, we're really waiting for that level 6 power spike to hit both Shaden and Will before they really start to make an impact. Yeah, I would have really liked to see Will make his way down to this bottom lane on the Gravitum timer. I think that's one of the strongest things about Aphelios, especially when you have a crowd control follow-up jungler and support, which they do. But Will didn't make his way down there. Lynx has the Gravitum for a little while longer, so it's not like the opportunity is completely lost. But that is one of my favorite things about Aphelios. And, uh, I, I... It's a shame that we missed it, but we did get to see them look at each other in the jungle, in the river a little bit. So it's not everything lost there, I yeah. suppose. It's been a lot fun. Of staring right now. We're just <laughs> both, both sides are feeling each other out a little bit. It's the rematch from last spring. Stare yeah. down. Make sure that you know, you're flexing your muscles before you really want to start to go in. Uh, and again, we are waiting for those level sixes. But for now, looks like things are pretty even. And that's kind of what we were expecting out of these two teams. I feel like... I, I would not be surprised to see this best of two go either way, especially with some of the, the roster changes that AoE made, really making them look pretty good as a five-man roster. It's a pretty big shift, though. Uh, like, yeah. they did keep two players, and specifically their carry players. Uh, so swapping out most of the roster is really interesting. Uh, it's, it's fun to remember that AoE is lightly affiliated with Golden Guardians, and they did get concept from the Golden Guardians Challengers roster True. alongside Acadia, who Will is actually credited quite a lot with some of his early uh, learnings and early teachings that he's had on this team. So um, cool to see the, the Golden Guardians uh, team, you know, still keeping that level of affiliation and also donating some of the some of the people and staff and everybody onto the team. Yeah, we see Young on Disguise, Rose Thorn now with Taco, Concept hey, yeah. getting an opportunity up on AoE, so nice to see that roster, who I thought was a, a really good team, a really good five-man squad, have some other opportunities here in the summer split. AoE, um, we were talking to Winnie and Skytech actually on Hawk and I's podcast during CeeLo, and they were saying how it's nice to be slightly aff lightly affiliated with the team, you get some extra uh, resources, and, and now uh, you, you kind of get that independence as well, which is a, an interesting balance in this space. 
We're gonna back to the game just a little bit. We are nearing the level six power spike for the junglers. Already have it on the solo laners, so uh, maybe some big action is going to be expected there. But again, once these ultimates come through from the jungle, it, the explosives can start to pop off. And I think specifically the thing you gotta watch out for is who is going to press the button first. If Vi ult happens first, then the Nocturne ult can be a really good response, but if you Nocturne ult first, Vi has a really hard time actually landing that cease and desist. So I think it is in Shaden's best interest to be first to the punch. We see both Will and Shaden hovering around the top side of the map. Rift Herald spawning in 20 seconds. Concept is in the lane first, so maybe we'll be able to sh get a shove in, help Will get priority around that objective, but it doesn't look like that is the main target right now for either of these teams. You see Lynx and Breezy going for a bit of a reset. If they go towards the top side, that is a signal that that objective will be contested by AoE. Mm. We see a bit of a gold, gar gold graph. It's, uh, it's good to note the numbers there. It hasn't yeah, really been not a lot. too staggering <laughs> either way, but here's Concept. He might have to ghost here. Pops the ulti in onto Shaden. Nice usage of the spell shield to make sure he does not get displaced. The knockup only landing onto one. Concept is low and will go down. First blood finding the way of Evil Genius' challengers. There you go. There is the first ultimate of the game, and it is Shaden getting the early punch and probably going to be the uh, Rift Herald here, too, as Smoothie's even rotating up. That's got to be the Evil Genius's objective. On the other side of things, though, Will has made his way to the Hextech Drake. Him and Lynx will be able to take that down in some sort of trade. But as you said, Summer, it was who pressed the R button first. It was Shaden. <laughs> will did not have the opportunity to respond, and that is Concept going down, has to walk all the way back to lane, already having burned that TP a couple minutes ago. Yeah, we touched early on wanting to see more out of Soul in this split, and in this game in particular. First Blood already, taking a couple of turret plates alongside King in the top lane. This is a pretty good opening to this match, as Soul looks like he's going to be teleporting down to the bottom lane, so uh, giving over the resources to the Jinx, trying to stabilize the bottom lane. That gold makes a lot of sense. Might be in a bit of trouble, but without the ultimate out of shade, it might be pretty difficult to take down this Cassante. But it is King getting a lot of plates. That is now four of them taken out on the top side. King, again, a big win condition for Evil Geniuses with the composition that they have selected for themselves. Working towards that first item, and as soon as you get that one reset in a team fight, I mean, that's what you pick this player up to do, right? Carry you through these mm. games, be a good, strong leader, a strong carry player for some of the new guns. And if you know, he's King's set up in a good position right now. I would definitely say so, yeah. Already that that first boot rush too. And yeah, okay, we're going full Australia lanes as well. Both bottom lanes just completely shifting focus up top, even though the objective has already been taken. Uh, it just seems more comfortable. I mean, Soul already committed the teleport down to the bottom lane. Seems like AoE just want to try desperately to match these plates because Lynx hasn't taken a single one. Actually, no, he has. He's taken one in the bottom lane. I believe that was him who did it. So congratulations to Lynx, but you are pretty far behind the Jinx. It's one plate, have four CS lead, but yeah, the four plates on King are definitely going to help out Evil Genius's bottom side there. Uh, as they continue to scale towards that inevitable late game, and they've been doing a good job farming things up. The gold lead sitting at 1.8k in their favor. You know, the Rift Herald playing a big role in that, and also just some of the CS leads that have been able to be generated, specifically on the top side of the map, as Concept was chunked out pretty badly. It might be the target once again under the bottom side. Shaden will dive in. Unstoppable by a lot of time with the cast from Soul will seal the second kill of the game for EG. 2-0 in the game for Soul, and you can't credit Shaden enough for these ones too. That's already two Nocturne ults used. We said we wanted him to be first to the punch on the ultimates. I mean, Will hasn't even punched a single person. I don't even think he's queued anybody yeah. in this game. Been pretty absent to the early game so far. 11 minutes in, Shaden, the late game that we that we hyped up for this Nocturne seems to be happening a little earlier. And this is something that I'm really excited to see out of Shaden because, you know, in that last game that they had against Wildcard, had some of these aggressive plays that went successful, also went a little bit too far multiple times, but he's been able to pick his angles, right? Now AoE gonna oh. look for something here. Smoothie flashed the wrong way, getting caught up by the cease of desist, and AoE will pick up their first kill of the game with the Gravitum W out of Lynx. A nice kill back as their AD carry gets a little bit of gold, but EG still in front. Yeah. Uh... 
That was definitely the wrong, <laughs> the wrong direction to flash. I think Smoothie's <laughs> brain worked a little faster than his fingers there. It's just like, I need to flash. Oh no, my mouse is in oh, the wrong position. I was pointing the wrong this direction. Is a disaster. Used his ultimate and his heal to try to make up for it, but yeah, as we watch this one again, uh, it does kind of, this kind of feel like bullying. But you know, the uh, flash. Yeah. Not where you want it. He, he probably meant to cue in that direction and then flash away. Whatever it is, looks very silly. <laughs> we are playing on the Chicago servers right now. That is potentially something to keep in mind as we go throughout the rest That's of the season. That's good cope, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe coping a little bit for my boy Smoothie, but it looks <laughs> like it will just be him dying here to Lynx. They both AD carries have picked up their first item of the game. It actually is Lynx with a little bit of a gold advantage right now. They have that additional crit cloak just from that one kill. Hmm. Yeah, not too bad. I... I... I guess you're right, yeah, the gold advantage in, as far as the inventories, is over to Lynx. Maybe he finished his cull first. I think that's kind of cheating. Uh, <laughs> they pick up, it looks like, one plate up there. Yeah, okay, he's up no. a little bit. Yeah, that's a kill. He actually is up quite a lot. Oh, yeah, oh, well, he did He did get the kill. You know what? I didn't even consider that. That is the person who picked up the smoothie kill. You know, I, I spent too much time just thinking to myself thinking about let's, let's move <laughs> let's move past the smoothie flash and not dwell on it too much i forgot who even killed him <laughs> yeah, i mean if you're aoe you're definitely happy to see lynx get a kill here uh has looked really good to start off this season alongside breezy uh, and part of a big reason why aoe sitting at the top of the standings right now at three and one which definitely was not something that many people were expecting coming into the year but the way that they've been playing looking so good so far so good you have to continue to, to team fight well against this Evil Genius' comp because it is built really well. As down, to the top, uh, down to the bottom lane, I should say. The top laners, looking it out a little bit. That dragon spawning in 10 seconds, and uh, looks like Soul's not going to have his ulti for that. Yeah, no cask, but you do still have a lot of power in that Nocturne ultimate, which again, has already been used twice. And again, Will has not really done a whole lot. I mean, he helped in that kill onto Smoothie, but I think Smoothie helped more than Will did, to be honest with you, is the uh, the, the flash again. This could be a big play, though. Yep, there's the stun and then the tipper. Go. Will going to land the knockup. As you say it, Summer, Will comes through and picks up another kill for AoE as Shaden will trade response to Dragon. Hooray! I love seeing that one. The the pick ults from Darkwings and Will proving their worth in this game. They trade it for the dragon on the other side of the map, but getting some gold into their pockets is going to feel really nice. And you really do want to have that available to have a countermeasure for this Jinx, who is already off to the races. I mean, King, he will be that guy later on. His frontliner is stronger than Concept right now, too. So it's going to be even more difficult to actually cut through everybody and access that Zonite in the back. See if it can be done. I mean, the game's still very close right now. AoE have done a good job at getting gold back into the into the players that need it. You know, Lynx has one. Will help Darkwings take down Ryoma there up in the top side of the map. So in a 5v5, things are going to go pretty evenly, I would say, for now. But, you know, well, we're going to have to wait and see. The second Rift Herald is up. Shaden hovering hmm. around there has that ultimate available. Might look for a play onto Lynx in the mid lane. I was thinking of making a move up there too. I think he's spotted on a couple of wards, but still potentially looking for it. He's got that Ari ultimate here as Shaden trying to be the only person to start this one up. I think his frozen trail is uh, revealing himself just a little bit. Looks like AoE though. They want to potentially contest this one. A lot of prio into the pit right now for EG, and so AoE have to be very careful, especially with Concept pushing on the top side. So the objective will just be secured by Shaden as Will and Breezy decide it's better to not die and also give up the Herald. Just take that turret in the bot lane for Concept. And it's an even turret trade at the same time because Soul has all of that extra time to hit the top lane one too as both top laners uh, getting, getting less attention than perhaps they deserve. The structure demolition is working quite well for both teams, but you gotta remember, Shaden did just secure another turret goes down, hopefully for them, with that Rift Trail that they picked up. So even more gold going over to EG, but you gotta also keep in mind that gold lead was quite a lot larger a few minutes ago. AoE's sort of yeah. stabilizing now. It was like 2K or something, and that yeah. was when it was only one yeah. kill to nothing or something, uh, along those lines. Yeah. And so 
Mm. AoE doing a good job to respond. We might see a play made again towards Concept, who's kind of been oh. targeted here by Shaded to start off this game. It looks like the response, though, from AoE will descend all five of their members down to the bottom side. Ryoma gonna get locked up by the season assist, and the Timbers on top will instantly delete the mid laner of EG. Shaded now has to flash smoothly, doing his best to get him out of there. But AoE find a beautiful pick in response to Shaden trying to kill Concept again. You attack Concept this many times, and AoE is going to notice after a while. They bring all five members to defend that going. top laner. Works quite well, and yeah, as you said, still looking for more AoE. They're clawing their way back into this one, killing Ryoma again. This Ari is put quite far behind now. I mean, Concept <laughs> kind of being the punching bag here, but this time yeah. AoE with a good response to teleport out of Darkwings was big on this play as well. Yeah, they noticed very, very fast that they were not going to kill the Cassante at all, uh, backing away. It's, it's sort of like, EG, with how fast they realized that that play wasn't going to work, you'd have to think that they should have realized it before they actually went for it to begin with. Yeah. But uh, the Foresight not quite entirely there, AoE now with the kill lead. We'll see what they can do with that one, too. They still have these gigantic pick ultimates in the Vi and the Annie, and even Breezy can get in on the action, as he just did. Didn't even use the ulti or the flash on that last play in the bottom side, so by the time this next Mountain Dragon spawns, a really good opportunity for AoE to work towards that objective and try and take it down, and even maybe pick a fight with EG, which is something that we were saying EG would be happy to do for the beginning parts of this game. Now AoE in a pretty good spot. Will has a full Divine Sunderer plus that extra Warhammer for a little bit of extra damage. And looks like he might get caught out as Shaden will decide to go in. But they don't figure out that Darkwings is here as well. Shaden down to about half HP. Will get taken out by Will. And now Ryoma trying to get a kill in response. But the healing is just too much. And Will will pick up a second kill. In the mid lane though, two members die for AoE as a double comes through for King. Oh, we're going to have to watch that one as well as rocket. King. Fires the rocket. Woo! <laughs> all right. Only two for King, but two, I think, is all he actually needs. Again, we've been talking about this guy as the main character of the composition for Evil Geniuses. I want to see what happened there, but let's let's talk a little bit more about what happened to this bottom lane as well. Yeah, Will. Uh, in the bottom lane, excuse me. Will survived with so many shields. The the Vi, the Vi passive shield and the Annie shield as well. Just cheating death multiple times. Really love to see that one. Let's, let's take a look at what happened here. Oh, soul. Ooh, Bumba. That's Man. a Bumba play right there. Nicely done. Soul. There we go. That's a, that's a beautiful play by you, man. Double kill for King, helping the veteran get super strong. And now there's a fight around this Mountain Dragon. Soul gonna dash forward once again. Still has the cast on cooldown, so won't be able to use it until EG makes their way towards the Drake. Concept about a half HP. He has to be the frontliner, but does not have a lot of health to do it. And yeah, no Nocturnal either, I think, for Evil Geniuses. Oh, they're actually, AoE's actually uh, falling for the bluff here considering that the ultimates could potentially be up. They actually didn't have them quite yet. So uh, AoE, I, I feel like they were a little more safe in that exchange than they thought they were, but giving over the third Drake of the game, EG now has halfway towards the soul. And, uh, oh, wait, Breezy on a support mission? He is very He's alone. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> you could have been in a lot more trouble. But seems to, seems to be aware of where the people on EG are, so he's able to go back to base safely. <laughs> That's one of those uh, one of those plays as support where you know that this is not something that you should really be doing, <laughs> but you want to get a ward down because there's a chance yeah, that that ward can time. turn into a TP flank. Yeah, yeah. Half the time. It works every time. This okay, in a lot work. of trouble. Wow, the burst out of Will and Darkwing's doing huge numbers, and now Will continuing the chase onto Smoothie. Darkwing did not want to follow his jungler, but it looks like Will continuing to try and beat down the members of Evil Genius's challengers. Teleport coming in from Soul. This could be a big flank. Breezy already knocking up Ryoma. The burst out of Will is too good, and Lynx will take down the Ari. Two for nothing, AoE, and they're not done just yet. Knock up landing in onto Soul. The all-out will drag him back. The Gragas is tanky, but not tanky enough. A big Bomba, but not enough damage, as Smoothie will use that W to help Soul escape. It is still two big kills for AoE. They continue to stay alive in this game. Oh, that fight was such a sunk cost fallacy moment for Evil Geniuses there, Andrew. The the Jinx had already been killed by the burst, but EG's like, well, wh 
but fight. But well, there, there's, go. there's fight going on. We, we have to fight, right? We, yeah. We avenge King! And they just lose even more. They lose the teleport on, on Soul. They lose their mid laner's life as well. 0-4-0 zero, zero on Ryoma. Not the yeah. greatest performance from him in this game. As That's a big shutdown as well, going over to AoE. The kill onto King, leading to almost a second item here for Will. It's a very strong buy. We were talking a lot about how Shaden was outplaying Will in the early portions of this first game, but ever since that second Nocturne gank down in the bottom lane, hasn't been up to all that much, and it's been Will going really aggressive, locking down these major carries of EGC. And now 3-0 and 4 has kind of put on his carry pants a little bit instead of the Radiant Virtue going for that Divine Sunderer Black Cleaver combo. Uh, and will be able to continue to burst King or Ryoma down if given the opportunity. This is such an interesting game. It's been a game of people getting picked off when they really shouldn't have been. I mean, King, the most recent victim of that, I would love to see a more coordinated 5v5 effort from these teams because they've been trading blows that don't really feel super consequential. Uh, and I really want to see those big explosions because if Darkwings and Will can find those gigantic ultimates, I think that'd be really, really impressive as they're kind of looking for it right now. You can see they really want oh, to make that happen. Getting tagged here by King, so has to run away. Concept spotted out here by Shaden. He's making sure that that Kasante is marked. And now EG making their way towards the Baron Pit. Darkwing's gonna flash on the King, but it gets cleansed by Smoothie. Breezy looking to continue the chase. The knockup lands in onto the Jinx, but he still remains alive. Ryoma dashing in, Shaden dashing in. Evil Genius is going forward, and King remains alive on top of it all. Two kills, and they're gonna continue to chase AoE down to the ground. Concept will die. A double kill for Ryoma, and EGC is headed to Baron. Oh, we mentioned how difficult it actually would have been for Darkwings and Will to find that exchange, and if they were able to, how impressive it really would have been. Darkwings tries to make it happen, but you can't get through the Gragas, you can't get through the Milio ultimate, and once the lights get turned out, I mean, it's just so over. Ryoma gets such an easy flank, and then it's Reset City. Ryoma's dashing everywhere, King's so excited, and that's going to be a Baron when we come back to live. Just a really nice response all in all from EG to punish that mis mismanaged engage from Darkwings. Yeah, Darkwings had the right idea, right? Flash forward, try to take down the Jinx. That was the game plan, right guys? But yeah, Smoothie used the ulti to keep King alive. And then Will really got stifled by Soul on that play, right? The yeah, Gragas frontlining sure. so well, peeling with the cask, with the body slams. You know, normally you follow that Tibbers up with Will's engaged with the cease to desist, and that is a dead jinx nine times out of ten. They weren't able to find that ultimate to follow up, and so it helped King survive, and now AoE kind of on the back foot. They're down four and a half thousand gold. Yeah, like we were talking about with the Gragas build versatility, sometimes you do get just like full damage. Soul doesn't have a, have a shred of AP in this nope. build at all. He is only a tank, and he's playing that role very, very well. As you said, completely shutting down the Vi engage. He's, he's potentially going to be forced to do that again. All of AoE is looking for it right now. AoE will have the inner angle towards that dragon, but EG is going to be happy to make that trade because they have Baron buff. They're going to continue on the top side, working towards that tier two. They do a lot of damage to these structures, and I'm sure this one is going to fall. AoE may be looking for a potential play, but it's really hard to find an angle in with Soul and Shaden doing such a good job of frontlining. This is so interesting. AoE refusing to trade on the other side of the rift. There is a Drake available that they could have potentially gone for, but really desperately finding that well, flank. This. It's been very difficult. Nah, spell shield's way, way, way too good. <laughs> way <laughs> too good. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot mean, that was an ability. I mean, it, was, it played a big <laughs> role in the top lane play and, and now here True. as well. So Shaden utilizing the champion's kit. That's visibility. <laughs> AoE's getting flown around the rift like a kite right now. EG is just got them on the end of a string, moving now towards the Drake, again forcing AoE, just daring them. Hey, try engaging on us. Try going through Soul. You saw what happened last time. We're just gonna take it. We know you won't do it. We triple dog dare you. And they're just and not the, biting. And with the composition that AoE have, if EG is grouped up, if Smoothie is there to protect Ryoma or King or whoever else AoE decide to send all of their ultimates towards, it's really hard for AoE to win a fight because you just pop that ulti, all the crowd control is cleansed, you get a lot of healing as well, and King of Ryoma, basically invincible if given the right spot. It will be the third Dragon Mountain Soul Point picked up for EG as they're just taking everything in AoE's jungle. 
Aegis had a had a, a some sort of lead for a good chunk of this game, but this one does seem a little bit too large to come back from. So they trying to get some soul. trades off on the soul. So yeah, it's just so then. impossible. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be pretty hard to frontline here if you are AOE when you're you're just getting constantly having your health pool regenerated against by soul. Hot lane tier two under fire. Will looking for a flank, but it's soul actually gonna dash forward. Whoa. Gets the body slam canceled here and now. Jaden has the ulti proc, not going to go in with the paranoia just yet as Darkwings is slowed up by the zap. Concept and Breezy are forced back to base and EG can continue to push. Yeah, everyone was really low, but Ryoma was stationed in the mid lane, so can't get the Spirit Rush resets off quite yet. The fireworks haven't quite blown up yet as EG oh, here they go. focused on the structures. King already popping the huh? watch here, going to get knocked up, try to get bursted okay. down. It is Will that takes down the Jinx against all odds. Oh, Another geez. one going the way towards Lynx. The shutdown goes against Soul and Smoothie now in trouble as well. A double kill here for Will. Ryoma and Shaden have to try to fight this out, but it's a 2v5. You do not win these, man. Ryoma in a lot of trouble here, has to throw out as much damage as possible. Shaden trying to fight this out. The damage is big, but Lynx is even bigger. Another two kills for the Marksman. 5-0 ace for AoE on the base defense. Evil Geniuses, maybe they focus too much on those structures, completely breaking apart their battle line. Soul not in a position to save King any longer. And in this gigantic corridor here, I mean, Soul's completely out of mana. Yeah. He can't stop the unstoppable Vi ultimate. They just get into this really solid engage pattern for AoE completely shutting down through the stopwatch king and then the rest of this team is just so easy to follow up on as well eg just losing their entire formation here i mean they spread their resources way too thin ryoma and shaden yeah. on that play were mid lane not even trying to protect the king they didn't have the baron buff anymore so you don't get that advantage just fighting off a little bit more than they could chew and now yeah. links five one and one three and a half items the bloodthirster almost in inventory as well it's suddenly an even game once again. Yeah, you know the worst thing about using your Nocturne Ultimate Grapes? It's that you don't have your Nocturne Ultimate anymore. <laughs> they knew that that cooldown is way too long. Shaden couldn't have possibly used the Nocturne Ultimate to get back onto King and stop that engage. So AoE, you know, for all this time, I was thinking, okay, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're really struggling to find this engage, but the patience, as it turns out, and now, now that it works, you know, it's patience instead of yep. uh, lack of commitment. <laughs> works out very well. And now AoE kind of in a good spot, right? Like you're, you're able to play these front to backs as long as you can find a way to burn some of those resources on evil geniuses. The paranoia is down. If the milio ulti is down, if King happens to get caught out, now he has a guardian angel, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But would it be surprised to see AoE try and make a play towards this Baron? They know that Soul is spawning in a minute and 30 seconds. This might be their best opportunity before EG get another major advantage. Lynx is ridiculously strong in this game too. Three and a half items on this Aphelios. He's been dealing a lot of damage in these fights. Now TP is here. Oh, this could be the gets charmed up, chunked to half already. Concept coming in with the reinforcement teleport to make sure that it is a 5v5 if things go awry. Breezy looks like he disconnected for a second, but is back into the game. EG standing strong, looking, posturing around this Baron. This is back to that waiting game for AoE. I don't know if they're going to be able to find another beautiful, perfect opportunity onto Evil Geniuses. They may need to make it for themselves as EG oh. spreading out a little bit here. Yeah, concept now chunked down to half two. Smoothie doing oh a good job to keep everyone oh AoE alive except for Soul as Link picked up another kill. And now Darkwing is flashing forward and it will trying to respond as well. Ryoma still at full HP. King at half with the Guardian Angel, but Will is going to flash forward. Woo! Shaden is taken out and the season assist on the King. They get the Guardian Angel and the Ryoma has to be the big damage dealer. Link's going to get first sit down, taken out, and now Ryoma can dash forward and try to finish off AoE. Darkwing's looking with the incinerate, but Ryoma goes golden and Will will fall to the floor. It is a 2v1 and the charm from Ryoma connects. Evil geniuses win the brawl. Ryoma finally waking up in this game, picks up so many kills in that fight and completely saves the game for Evil Geniuses. I mean, that engage was the perfect one for AoE. They completely eviscerate Soul again. Lynx is so, so strong on this Aphelios. And then the follow-up engage too. Super, super nice from the front line. But that Nocturne ultimate, 
it actually did so much to stifle everybody else and give Evil Geniuses another little bit of positioning. And then with the Cassante ultimate bringing Ryoma kind of to safety there, I think yeah. that was a bit misplaced as King, uh, or excuse me, Lynx gets charmed up completely bursted from a thousand HP and then Ryama goes crazy in, in the rest of this one. That's going to be a Drake soul for Evil Genius as you can see in the bottom left of your screen. And this game might have completely turned on its head again back to Ichi. Yeah, it looked like maybe AoE had an opportunity there. The Guardian Angel on King having such high value there, keeping him alive for just that extra amount of time to make sure that AoE could not just immediately shift their attention towards Ryoma. They had to kill King once again. And in that respawn timer, Ryoma was able to burst down Lynx. And now it is Evil Genius's challengers with the Mountain Soul. The Baron is still up as EG weren't able to take that, but that might be their next target without a lot of response from AoE. The last thing I'll say about that last team fight, Smoothie's ultimate was so high value, positioned very, very nicely to dodge out on the Tibber stun, cleansed everybody immediately. That was a big, big winner in the fight as well as Smoothie survives the entire time. He's recovered well from that failed flash from before. Will, Will looking for the engage. Looking for something. A big moon like Vigil with the Inferno Ooh. out of flings, but Breezy is already taken out of the fight. Soul dashing forward, going in with Shaden on the backside. Link's already dead. Evil Genius's challengers have scaled to late, and their win condition in King has arrived. A triple kill for the Marksman. Only Concept survives, and EVG don't need a Baron to end the game. They'll take game one of this series. Oh, that time around, Soul did not get cut through like butter. Stayed stalwart in the front of his team as Concept is trying to stay alive throughout this one. Gonna be teleporting. He knows. I think the fear is gonna cancel this. Yeah, it does. This game is over. What a game. It was back and forth for a little bit. But the new found marksman and king returning to North America here in week number one <laughs> will send EG to a winning record. A little bit of extra style. Eight kills here for King. And now AoE gonna have to try to respond to make this one a split on their last day of the week. <laughs> Getting some last few minion kills and a kill in that column for King with a super mega death rocket. Evil Genius's challengers bring it back, find themselves back in a positive win record as well. And against AoE Gold, now both these teams are three and two. Yeah, what a great game once again from King. Can we take a look at the gold and, and like the, the post game screen? I want to see how much damage that Jinx did there in that game. I mean, whoa. All Ooh. right, 35k. Links did a lot as well, but it was all about King, as we alluded to in the draft. And hey, our prophecies kind of came true. Yeah, and like we were saying, Evil Geniuses, they had that lead for pretty much the entirety of this game. You can see that pretty major dip was when they crushed their own battle lines, used yep. that Nocturne Ultimate on nothing, and allowed for the full ace from AoE, but the recovery was very strong. Again, credit a lot to Ryoma for bouncing back in this game that looked otherwise very shaky from him. And yeah, just really nicely done for Evil Geniuses. I'm looking forward to seeing if they can make this a 2-0. A great game to start off our day here on the LCS Challengers League B stream. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, Joshi will be back to help us out on our Rally Cry halftime show. <laughs> 